Good morning. You can see the sun shining on my face. That's pretty exciting because we haven't seen the sun in what seems like weeks, but it's probably been about five days. We really miss the sun because it powers our electricity and we've had the fridge on propane for the last few days as a precaution. We have an action-packed day ahead of us today. We've had to do our fair share of buying things from big box stores to get things built around here. But today we are participating enthusiastically in the local economy of Facebook Marketplace. Local around here means that you usually have to drive pretty far over the river and through the woods, literally. And then Charles has another project afterward. So where are we going? To pick up some tongue and groove pine lumber for our walls and some bricks for the rocket mass heater. And then where? <laughs> then we're going to go to a friend's house and fabricate a P channel for the rocket mass heater. Just picked up a full bundle of one by eight by six foot long tongue and groove pine lumber. And we are going to use that for our interior walls of our yurt for the cladding of the interior walls. And it is industrial grade, which means it's got quite a few knots, which will make it look really pretty. I think it'll look really great in the yurt. Yeah, I had these for clients. We have a landscape and tree business. Second stop of the day, we just stopped and picked up 200 plus bricks. And I will use those to start the mass for the rocket mass heater. After we had collected our precious building materials, we dropped off the trailer at home and we had one more destination. A new friend in the village had invited Charles to borrow his metalworking tools. So we stopped by to fabricate a piece of the rocket mass heater. For this job, Charles brought a rectangular piece of steel tubing and a diagram of the finished P channel which is a pipe that will help suck air into the burn chamber. He would need to make several cuts on the miter saw and then weld the two pieces together. What happened, Charles? There's a little cutout where the airflow comes in and goes into the port of the mass heater. And it's supposed to go the other direction. That's going in. It needs to go out. I have to cut another piece like this. Held together in a fall? Yeah. And look, it's durable. 
<laughs> Amazing all the time it takes to get ready. Mm -hmm. And then a few minutes to do it. Right? And here's the P-channel in the spot where it will eventually be glued down on the batch box heater. It's just extra airflow to come in here and goes directly into the portal in the back. quite a thick layer of frost on the mudroom windows today, but it's another sunny day and I just heated the water with electricity instead of propane. And I just wanted to show you how easy it is to empty our gray water and black water tanks in our new situation down here, hooked up directly to the septic port. For those of you who don't remember the rock pile, that's just a bollard to make sure that we don't run over our septic port. So all we have to do is remove that piece of insulation and pull the handles. And then everything runs right down the pipe with gravity. So easy compared to our previous situation. While we're out here, we'll check the propane. The indicator up there in the middle would be green if both bottles were still at least partly full. The red means one of the bottles is empty. We've unwrapped our affordable, pretty tongue and groove boards, and we're going to get this whole pile into the yurt. This is going to be way more lumber than we need for the walls. So we may end up making our door out of it and maybe even making cabinets out of it. As it turns out, our first winter up here has been milder than we anticipated. But of course, not everything is easier than it was in the summer. As many of you know, we're filling the water tanks twice a week now from a neighbor's frost-free hydrant since we can't collect rainwater in the winter. And we didn't expect mud season until early spring, but so far we've had a thaw after every freeze and everything is muddy. One nice thing about the mild winter is that we've had a chance to catch up on some chores. If you've been wondering whether our modest pile of firewood is enough to last through a winter of yurt projects, We've been wondering the same thing. But Charles cut down a few trees before we even moved here, and he's been meaning to cut them up for months. We look forward to sharing more of those indoor yurt projects with you very soon, including the rough-in of the electrical wiring. <laughs> 